What's up, GV Youth? Man, it is so cool that you're here with us at Home Groups. When you came into your home group, you got a prepackaged snack, you were hand sanitized, temperature checked. We just wanted to create a safe environment for you to learn about Jesus, worship together, hang out with your friends, and have so much fun. Now, next week, we're actually not going to be at home groups. Next week, we're going to be on campus. Yeah, I said it. We are going to be on campus. Junior high, you're going to be in the worship center of the 7-Eleven building. And high school, you're going to be in our youth venue, the back lot of the 706 building. Man, it's going to be so much fun being together again. It's going to be the same time, 6.30 to 8.30. High school, you're in the back lot. Junior high, you're in the worship center. It's going to be so much fun. We're going to have food, prizes, so much fun. It's going to be incredible. And guess what? It's St. Patty's Day, so make sure you wear green. Also, a really cool thing that's happening very soon is summer camp. We love summer camp. There's some changes. This year, we are going to Arizona, depending upon travel restrictions. And we are doing two camps. We're doing a junior high camp uh, from June 2nd through the 5th, and we're doing a high school camp June 16th through the 19th. Now, spots are running out. People are signing up like crazy. So you need to sign up quickly. How you do that is you just go to gvchristian.com and go to the events tab. And if you're in junior high, if you're currently in junior high, look for the junior high camp. And if you're currently in high school, look for the high school camp and sign up that way. And if you sign up by April 1st, you can go to the car wash. You can participate in that, which offsets the cost for summer camp. But right now we have a very special guest bringing the word. Her name is Adriana. Let's check out the message. Why? 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 Hey GV Youth and welcome back to another great week of home groups. If you don't know me, my name is Adriana and I lead a home group of some really awesome junior high girls. Um, today I have the privilege of bringing the message. Um, we just started a new series called The Why. Today we're going to be asking the question of why do we pray? Now at first, this seems like it has a very basic, simple answer. Um, duh, because God tells us so. God tells us to pray. The Bible says that we need to pray. Well, these answers are correct. Yes, God does tell us that we need to pray. The Bible says that. But I want to dig a little deeper. Why does God tell us to pray? Why does the Bible say that we need to? Um, I have two very important reasons why I think God tells us we need to pray. So God does indeed command us to pray several times throughout the Bible. I'll list a few right now. So in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18, it says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, on all kinds of prayers and requests. Uh, 1 Timothy 2.1 says, I urge then, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone. And then in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter, chapter 5, verse 17, it talks about how we should pray without ceasing, meaning that we should never stop praying. We should be in constant prayer. So... Why does God give these commands? Something that's been very important in my life that I've noticed is God gives commands not simply because he's God and he's just like, hey, you should listen to me because I said so and that's it. I found that the reason why God gives these commands in the Bible is to help us through life. He gives them for us. 
So that leads me to our first reason as to why we should pray. Um, very, very simple answer. It is how we communicate with God. That is the first reason. Prayer is simply talking to God, like you would be talking to a friend or a family member. It's that easy. Um, our God is a personal God, meaning he always wants to be in relationship with us. Um, as human beings, we actually need, not just want, but we need human connection. There are studies that show that our mental, physical, and emotional health is so much better when we have human connection. And I understand all you introverts out there, me too. Uh, but we still do need others and we need human beings. Well, that attribute actually comes from God because we are made in his image. He wants a personal relationship with us. Um, God is so powerful. So he doesn't need us, but he absolutely wants us. Communication is important in any type of relationship. So let's say you come up to me and are like, hey, Adriana, like, do you have a best friend? And I'd be like, of course I have a best friend. Okay, what do you guys like to do? Uh, we don't really hang out. Okay, um, so do you guys like text, talk on the phone? No, we don't really talk either, actually. Okay, so you don't hang out and you don't talk on the phone uh, or talk at all. So are you guys even friends? Well, here's the point of that. In order to have relationship with somebody, there has to be communication. If there's no communication, there's no relationship. That's exactly how it works with God. Um, the more that we communicate with somebody and spend time with them, the more we understand them and are able to understand how to go through life with them. And just like with God, the more time that we spend with him, the more we begin to understand who he is, the more we begin to trust him, and then we become like him. Uh, the second reason why God wants us to pray is because God wants us to participate in his work. So God is all powerful. He can do all things. However, you can see throughout the Bible that his most powerful moments he uses through his people. An example of this would be well, you might have heard of this guy before. His name is Jesus, um, and Jesus is God. Uh, but this is where our example starts. So Jesus, as we know, did a lot of amazing miracles. He, um, I almost said parted the Red Sea. He did not part the Red Sea. That was Moses. Uh, Jesus uh, resurrected from the dead. He healed the blind man. He healed all the sick. Um, he did amazing things. However, before Jesus went back to heaven, he said to his disciples, you will do even greater things than what I have done when the Spirit becomes upon you. Well, in the book of Acts, we see this actually happen. The disciple Peter, it shows that many people used to put uh, those who are sick in the streets just so that Peter's shadow would cast upon them. Just Peter's shadow alone would heal them. Now today, we may not need these huge, amazing, miraculous signs and wonders. Honestly, the biggest miracle is showing Jesus' love. I know for me right now in my life and throughout my whole life, the most I felt Jesus' love is through other people. There's one moment specifically that has stuck with me for forever that I want to share with you guys. So um, one thing that I actually struggle with, I struggle with anxiety. Um, it can be very hard at times. Uh, and it started for me when I was 16. And it reached this peak, this height, um, when I had gone on a missions trip. 
and don't get me wrong missions trips they're great they're amazing um, but this was just a, a really hard trip for me so we went to Nicaragua and um, we slept on the floors in the schools and it's over a hundred degrees there was a farm outside our window uh, no air conditioning um, just windows and you could hear the hens the pigs the chickens just all night long um, I was just like going through a lot um, in my soul and I had two chaperones with me and there were two other girls in the room we were sleeping on air mattresses and uh, it was a it was a rough night and that would probably be the first night that I had a, an anxiety attack and so I'm sitting there and I'm I, I, I'm so scared. I just really feel like I can't necessarily move or speak and I just feel tears coming down my face and um, I remember just feeling so trapped. And so I asked God, God, please, please wake somebody up because I need help. And I waited a few moments and nothing had happened and I started feeling devastated. Um, I needed God and I need some, I needed help. And when I had started feeling that, all of a sudden I saw this bright light on my face. And then I heard, Adriana, are you okay? And it was one of my chaperones. Uh, she was, she had a flashlight and was flashing it in my face. And I looked up at her and I was like, no, I'm not okay. And so she sat with me and she was like, I just woke up in like a deep sleep. I never wake up. And all of a sudden I was just like, I need to ask Adriana if she's okay. And it was not only great that God had answered my prayer for somebody to help me, but he sent the right person to help me. She had told me that uh, she had dealt with anxiety for a lot of her life. And she not only helped me that night, but became a mentor to me for years. And we're still in contact with one another. So you see, you guys, thankfully that night, God heard my prayers, which he always hears those prayers. But that's a night where I was just like, Ugh, I know he he listens. And not only was he listening to me, but he sent somebody else who's very connected to him to help me. And so I want to let you guys know that sometimes God doesn't answer right away. God says no. Um, and sometimes he gives us the answer that we don't necessarily want. But he is present with us at all times. And sometimes the answer isn't even no. Sometimes it's just wait. Before I leave, I want to uh, give you guys a very special verse. Well, all verses are special, but this one's extra special today. Um, it's James 5, 16, and it says, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. You guys, your prayers are powerful and effective. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us this outlet to where we can spend time with one another and have fellowship and learn about you all at the same time, Lord. Please help us remember that our prayers are powerful because we love you and are in right relationship with you, Lord. I pray right now that we go uh, forth every single day remembering that you are present with us, even when you give us the answers we don't necessarily want. I pray, dear Jesus, for every single person who's hearing this video tonight, Lord, that they will feel loved and encouraged. In your name we pray, amen. Bye guys, it was great speaking with you.